Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com and we have some very exciting days ahead. I know our, a lot of you out there have kind of maybe halfway gone back to sleep. Some of you have just gone back to sleep for good, but this is not the time to do that. I want to put this uh, out here, take a, uh, a slight departure from our study in Romans to talk to you about something that's really been on my mind a lot lately, that people have written me about a lot lately and asked me questions about a lot, um, because the, the time is drawing to a close. Um, I want to say up front that I will not refer to this religious system that I'm about to address by name. I have reasons for not doing that. But some of them very personal. I've just kind of come to a point in my life Toward that I just I don't even want to speak the name of this religious system. Uh, so most of you will know what I'm talking about as we go along, and I hope you'll find this uh, this video of some interest. Now, let's uh, start I guess here by just looking at some facts. The there's facts concerning this religion, and it's the only religion to pursue global dominance throughout its existence since, since 622 A.D. Uh, right away, I think many of you know what I'm talking about. It's the only religion to make the declaration convert or die. Now, now I know there, most everyone ought to really know what I'm talking about, but I'm still not going to mention the name of this religion. It's the only religion whose teachings reflect such a theology. It doesn't hide its immense hatred for Jews and Christians worldwide, and its preferred method of execution is beheading. It comprises around 57 nations, give or take a few, and a total population of approximately 1.3 billion. It is the deadly wound that is being is presently being healed. It died in 1924 at the end of World War I. Uh, the Allied forces took control of the region. Uh, it is the fulfillment of Revelation 13.3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is not a man. This is a religious system. Uh, I'll just go ahead and remind you of what I believe. It's the revived Ottoman Empire. I find it interesting that from 1924 to 1990, the Gulf War, we're looking at 66 years. Now, I want you to imagine it with nuclear capability uh, because we read about such destruction in the prophecies concerning the end times. The Bible states that those nations engaged in the massive last day's attack on Israel are those which currently surround Israel, the border nations. All of these nations are dominated by this one religion. Uh, it's not that there are not perhaps other religions within those regions, but they're dominated by that one religion. Psalm 83, 4, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The Bible clearly reveals these, region, these regions, geographical locations, by the following names, Edom, Moab, Ammon, Gabal, Tyre, Philistia, Assyria, the land of the Ishmaelites, the Hagarites, the Hagarites, and the children of Lot. The nations which correspond to these regions are Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Gaza, and Turkey. Now we know this from Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Zechariah, and the book of Revelation. If you're just watching YouTube videos, all of the entertainment that's out there, all the conspiracy theories, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking in the wrong direction, if you're, if you're thinking that it's uh, this one world religious system is something other than what uh, the Bible presents it as, 
then you're looking at sideshow circus attractions. You're not looking at the truth of the Word of God, and that, that is important because we're leading people astray by pointing them in the wrong direction, away from the direction in which this danger is coming. We won't be here, but we'll have brothers and sisters who will be uh, here during the tribulation period. I'm talking about tribulation saints. They're left behind. They're saved during the tribulation. If we point them in the wrong direction now, it does them a disservice then. And I can't emphasize that enough. These sideshow attractions, you know, well, it's Obama, it's Kushner, it's the Pope. Uh, that's exactly what they are. They're sideshow attractions. There's no, they're not based on sound biblical exegesis. And they are misleading multitudes astray. And there's a force behind that, and it's, and it's our enemy, Satan. What he's doing is he's distracting people from the truth. Trouble is coming one way. He's saying, don't look that way. Look this way, away from the direction in which the trouble's coming. Now, you can believe this or not, but I'm telling you the truth, folks. And this is not a game. Bible study is hard work. But even to the most... You don't have to be a Bible scholar. All you have to do is understand what the text says. The text is giving us the geographical locations of this end-time, one-world religious system, the Antichrist system. It's handed it to us on a silver platter, and not just through Scripture, but through, well, news media as well. God's given the world no excuse, none whatsoever not to recognize or identify this religious system. Just turn on your news. We've been involved in this in, for quite some time, for at least going back to 9-11-2001, but really it goes back even further. People are deadened. They're just blind and deadened to the reality of what is truly going on as it pertains to this one world, end times, religious, antichrist system. Especially people in the West are looking for something to confirm this from a Western perspective, a Western standpoint. Folks, these prophecies are Middle Eastern. They've always been Middle Eastern. They'll always be Middle Eastern. And Scripture confirms the identity and does does so quite clearly quite clearly. As most religions do, this religion has a book, it has its own book, that confirms its role in end times prophecy. This book's prophetic ideas run parallel with, but counter to, those of the Bible which confirm its true origin and purpose. And this book has been so well designed, so well crafted, that when the end comes, the majority of its followers will see themselves as the true children of God. That is Satan's counterfeit plan. It presents its own Savior, who will be the Antichrist of the Holy Bible. This Satanic book presents its own Savior, who will be the Antichrist of Scripture. It also presents the one and only true Savior of God's people, Jesus Christ, as its Antichrist. It's a complete reversal, folks. It is Satan's master counterfeit plan. And the fact that this occurred on this date is not a coincidence. You know, if you follow this channel, I don't believe in coincidences. God's will will be done on heaven and in earth. What he decrees shall come to pass. He's not asleep. He's not a bystander. He's involved meticulously in every single finite, minute detail in life. This didn't come about on this date as a result of an accident. It didn't come about as a result of, and I've heard people say, well, Steve, the occult picked this date, or the, the powers that be chose this date. Whether that's true or not doesn't negate the fact that God allowed it to occur on this date as a wake-up call. Yet most people are blind to what is going on. 
the foundation and the rise of the Ottoman Empire is a period of history that started with the emergence of the Ottoman Principality in 1299. 1299. That's not a coincidence either. These numbers are not a coincidence. 1299 plus 700 years, that divine number 7, to, to 1999. We see a lot of sevens associated with Trump. And 1999, and then bin Laden feared to be planning a terrorist attack. This is an article from CNN in 1999. In 1999, just as a side note, I found this interesting, a baby boy symbolically designated the world's six billionth person. Six billion. And that reminds me of 6,000 years of man's rule, 1,000 years, Christ's rule, 7,000 years. Six billionth year was born to a first-time mother in Sarajevo. Now, this would be, amazingly, 700 days to 9-11. 700 days to 9-11. We know that Turkey is urging the Islamic world to unite against Israel. Uh, Erdogan, Prime Minister Erdogan, is behind this, this movement. He wants to be the dominating force for this one world end times movement. Uh, you want this religion, this, including its military force, in the final days where many Bible students go wrong, including many Western Bible scholars and Bible teachers. Since, not if, but since all the, the, the geographical areas which the Bible states will attack Israel are today part of this religion, the Antichrist cannot, cannot arise from a European confederacy, but will be that part of the Roman Empire which lay in the Middle East, Folks, these prophecies are Middle Eastern. They're not Western. Prophecy shows that Christ is coming in person to crush this one world religion. Now, this ought to get you excited because we are pro approaching, fastly approaching the end of days. You can see the stage being set, folks. The, the chess pieces are being put into place. Just turn on your news. His army will comprise the elect angels, the raptured and the risen dead, who will not merely observe. No, no, we're not going to stand idly by, but we will have an active role in these battles themselves. Uh, just as another side note, this, this, I don't have any scripture to back this up. This is just my personal belief that because we will be active in these battles, we, it's not that we're going to yield some physical sword. Will have glorified bodies. I believe that the words that we speak will assist Christ in defeating the Antichrist. That's just my personal belief. Now, if you follow this channel for any length of time, you know that I believe that a timeline must have, according to Daniel and Revelation, a particular number of days. And when we look at that timeline, and we see that from the return of Christ to the kingdom, there is a period, a space, a gap of 75 required days, then it makes sense. It all makes sense because Christ doesn't return and just wave some magic wand and everything is just all, you know, ready for the kingdom. You know, the kingdom just begins the moment he returns. That is not what Isaiah and Ezekiel have shown us. There are battles that take place. The Lord Jesus will oppose him in Taman and Paran at Saudi Arabia. The conflict will also extend to the land of Kushan and Midian. Kushan includes modern Sudan and Somalia. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth and Edom, shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. We read about that in Numbers. 
Moab, Edom, and Seir are all southeast of Israel and embrace much of today's Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. And now U.S.-Saudi relations are questionable. Just turn on your news, folks. This is all part of the, of the bigger picture. Nothing happens by accident. It's all part of the, it's just another piece of the puzzle. I'm not going to go through these verses, but, you know, you can, I've got this on the screen here. You read these verses from Ezekiel, and you'll see that what I'm telling you is the truth. This is Middle Eastern. It's not European. It's not North American. It's European. This is the land where Esau and his descendants, the Edomites, made their home. This would embrace a great part of Saudi Arabia. The land that will be made desolate by the Messiah will stretch from Taman in today's Yemen to Dedan, an ancient city in central Saudi Arabia. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged him, himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Taman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. Ezekiel chapter 25. Isaiah depicts the Messiah coming north out of Saudi Arabia, his clothes drenched with the blood of his victims, whom he has trodden down in his anger and his fury. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Don't confuse the meekness of Christ in his first coming with his role as king and conqueror and the judgment of Christ at his second coming. Isaiah also includes Egypt as part of this judgment. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Now you can take that as a real cloud. I actually think it's that the Israeli Air Force led by the Messiah will fly over Gaza, the shoulders of the Philistines. That's That Gaza is the shoulder shoulders of the Philistines and attack Egypt. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. But they, that's Judah and Ephraim, shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. That's fly over Gaza, the shoulders of the Philistines, and attack Egypt, where they will wreak devastation. The Antichrist system is Middle Eastern. It's always been, this stuff is Middle Eastern, folks. It's not European. It's not North American. It's not South American. It's not Australian. It's not Chinese. It's not Russian. It is Middle Eastern. Prophecy is Middle Eastern. And this is, I, I wonder, often wonder why so many Christians can't seem to grab onto the fact that this is geographically contained. I believe it will spread, you know, to other parts of the of the world, and that there will be a global conflict. But the focus is primarily on the Middle East. We're looking at God's enemies. These are those of another seed. We know that Satan planted his seed. Christ sowed his seed. 
We know if we've studied any 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 of the Old Testament at all at all, we know that these are two seeds, the two seeds that are divisive, that are at enmity with one another, the seed that Christ sowed, the seed that Satan sowed. You know, we have this uh, we have this presented to us in so many ways. Uh, you know, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated, you know, Ishmael and Isaac. These are two different seeds. They are stepbrothers, I guess you might say. Uh, they're all sons of Abraham, but it's they're, they're brothers of a different mother. You know, Hagar, the bondwoman, instead of Sarah. So it's a family feud, folks. It's a family feud, and it goes back almost all the way to the beginning. And if a tornado is approaching from the east, you wouldn't tell your friends to look to the west. We're not going to be here. I assure you of that. The church doesn't step one foot inside Daniel's 70th week. We will not be here, but our tribulation brothers and sisters will be. These are our brothers and sisters. So we do God's people a disservice when we direct their attention, the world's attention, which many will come to be saved during that tribulation period. We do them a disservice when we direct their attention away from the direction in which these judgments will come. After we're gone, many people are going to be looking in the wrong direction because of all of that garbage that's out there which came about, which comes about as a result of a serious lack of understanding of end times biblical prophecy as it regards this particular subject. Look, I love you all. I truly do. And I thank you for watching. Keep looking up. Until next time, this is Steve. We here at BlessedHopeForever.com are proud to have as a sponsor Epic.com. Epic is a full-service domain name registrar and web host. The founder is a longtime supporter of this channel. If you've never heard of Epic, it is the only registrar in the global top 50 that's owned and led by Christians, and it is the chosen partner of the American Bible Society. Now, if you're a Christian and you own domains or you need web hosting, then I invite you to check them out at epic.com and for those of us who are looking forward to eternity epic offers forever registration and forever hosting